DC for uh, the beginning of the 20th century, most of the 20th century, did not have not only no representation in Congress, they didn't even have a city government, and they couldn't even vote for anything. People couldn't vote in D.C., um, which is... Now, uh, I, I know you just read a book on it, and you're maybe not a master of the topic, but was that done intentionally? <laughs> is there some kind of reason Washington, well, D.C. has no kind of political framework at all? See, it actually ties back to the name Chocolate City. Because, <laughs> uh, the Yes, the, the majority white Congress controlled D.C. and did not want to uh, give controlled power to its, its residents, who were um, predominantly majority uh, African-American. And, but wasn't um, there like a hundred years where it wasn't? A majority black city? Yeah, there were different times, and it's kind of gone back and forth and stuff. But uh, for the 20th century, it, it for most of it, since I believe the early 1900s, there was no right. no government. It was just a congressional committee, and well, it was uh, was the original the original reason that just be some weird beginning of the American government shit, right? I'm putting my money on an oopsies. Like, oopsies, we didn't set up any kind of government for the capital of the country. <laughs> I guess this is just like a squat now that the White House is in. Oops, all Mary and Berries. <laughs> <laughs> Frank well, and Mary they, and Berry. That's what they wound up getting because it became sort of... <laughs> God damn it, I said I, not to I, use that button. I'll stop, I'll stop. That I'll is stop. an evil button! <laughs> yeah. It became sort of a hotbed of uh, Marion Berries, uh, who of his time in, in the 60s was a civil rights activist, was a follower of MLK, and uh, a bunch of young people like him moved to, moved to D.C. to agitate and uh, to fight um, violently and nonviolently for, for civil rights. Uh, one of those people who was, you know, would come to D.C. Uh, a lot was a man who would later go, go on to be known as Kwame Ture, but uh, at the time, in the 60s, was known as Stokely Carmichael, who was recently invoked by uh, enemy of the show, William Jefferson Clinton, mm-hmm. yeah. at, uh, at John Lewis's funeral. And that guy like, hates this show. <laughs> basically, uh, to sum up Clinton's remarks, he was like, there's two kinds of black people. There was there uh, <laughs> <laughs> never finished. You gotta the bit. pick a quote we can finish, guys. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> there was no. This is what he said. He was like, there was Stokely, and there was a way that was going, and then there was John Lewis, and he was one of the good ones. That's what Bill Clinton said, pretty much. All right. Um, Stokely's <laughs> will be stealing your TV. Turn around, and be like, looks like you got robbed. 